Hey guys, welcome back. We are at another edition of One Quilt from Start to Finish. This is the second series in this um, thing <laughs> that we're doing together. And so today um, we are working on the next step in the Live Boldly Quilt by Charisma Horton. It is the next project that I'm working on. And so I have cut um, all of my squares for this pattern. So she calls to cut a bunch of different squares and then you subcut those into triangles. So you cut them in half diagonally and then in some of them in half again diagonally. The interesting thing about this particular pattern is that what Charisma did was instead of making a quilt in different sizes because it has less blocks or more blocks, what she did was she changed the size of the quilt block. So if you see my triangles, these are pretty big and this is only one fourth of the square that's gonna be done. If you're making the small one, you will have the same pieces. They will just be much smaller. So I thought that was super interesting. I hadn't seen that done that way before. Um, again, I'm a relatively new quilter in the scheme of things. I've only been quilting for about six or seven years. So that's kind of new in this particular, I'm going to lower my chair a little bit, in this particular um, craft. So I haven't seen all the things and I haven't done all the things, right? And so that's part of the fun thing is that we'll get to learn some of those things together. But I thought that was so cool. So if you're making the smallest quilt, the blocks will be little, the medium quilt are medium size, and then the big quilt, which is what I chose to make because I love those big quilts, is really, really big. So because I cut squares, I cut a strip with the fabric and then I cut that into squares, right? And so what happens is I end up with these little triangles. Well, let me tell you something. We've got to sew these guys together. And any experienced quilter will tell you that when you cut something diagonally, look at that. See that stretch? I don't even want to pull on it too hard. This way, no stretch. This way, stretch. So the important thing when you're sewing triangles, whether they're this big or really little, is that you have to know where the bias is and where that stretch is going to happen so that you do not yank on that or pull it or distort it in any way. One of the things that you can do to avoid distortion of a triangle when you're going to sew half square triangles or anything like that that you've cut these this way is by um, pinning, first of all, but most importantly, is starching. So I try not to do too much starching. I would rather slow down my machine and sew a little slower and take my time going down that diagonal than over starch my fabric because that also tends to distort um, the heat and the starch together. It changes the shape of a piece of fabric sometimes. It will stretch it in its own way sometimes. So what I do is I use something called Best Press. It is not starch. Thanks to one of my YouTube subscribers, I found out that it's actually called sizing. And sizing is a little lighter than starch. It's not exactly the same thing, although it does kind of accomplish the same thing. So I did use Best Press on all of my fabric that I pressed before I started cutting. And that helps a little bit. It gives a little bit of body to those pieces, right? So I am using my Art Gallery Fabric Solids. And I chose, you can see, we've got a few different triangles here. So we've got a black, we've got a dark gray, and we've got a light gray. And then this guy down here is the white. And look how pretty that all looks together, right? So now I must make these blocks and I must sew pieces together. I have to sew two triangles together. We're going to take a black piece and we're going to take a gray piece. And the thing is, I am going to be sewing on that stretchy side, right? So because it's so super stretchy, I need to make sure that I'm not pulling, tugging, doing anything that's going to stretch that out of shape and distort the pieces. Here's another thing that I will tell you. Most of the time, if I make half square triangles, I make them two at a time. What that means is I take a square, I draw a diagonal line on my lighter fabric. So I take two squares, put them together, draw a line diagonally across one of the squares, whether it's, you know, it's the lighter or the darker, draw a line. And then sew one quarter inch to each side of that line. So that when I slice those in half, I actually have two half square triangles of the same two colors. Now, in this particular case, I do have several blocks that will be just a half square triangle. And in that case, I probably will make two at a time because I have to make several different blocks and I have to make multiples of those blocks. Some of them we only need one, some we need two, there's one that we need a bunch more. So um, depending on what the block is and how I have to make it, I may make two at a time. 
In this particular case, this block has all four of these colors. So two colors on one part of the triangle and two colors on the other part of the triangle. So four different colors in, meaning I have to sew these like half triangles together. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully and very slowly sew this uh, black and the dark gray together. And I do have a setting on my machine for a quarter inch seam. So I typically use that. Um, I'd always sew with my needle down because I use, and I think I've talked to you guys a little bit about this, leaders and enders. So I do use little scraps of fabric to start off and to end up sewing. Um, the reason for that is, is this. When I first began to quilt and I would just sew, um, my stitches would unravel at the beginning and the end of the block. So the first thing I thought of was, oh, I'll just backstitch. I'll just do one or two back stitches at the top and one or two back stitches at the bottom and that'll hold it together. And what I found was that the additional thread in those back stitches gave a little bit of bulk right at the ends of the block. I didn't really like that. It changed and distorted my quarter inch seam allowance sometimes. So I had to come up with a better way. I found a tutorial on YouTube. I don't remember who it was. I would love to give credit to her, but she used leaders and enders because what happens is as you're sewing and your needle is picking up the bobbin thread, it's making almost, if you've ever seen like a crochet chain, something like that. So when you start sewing on a separate piece of fabric and then continue chain piecing into your, into your units that you're putting together, there's like this little twisty bit at the end. So it keeps the ends tight, as it were, until you put the blocks together. There's no extra thread there, so there's nothing to disturb your seam allowance, and everything just kind of stays together pretty well. Now, if you don't have a problem with the unraveling, then you don't really need leaders and enders, and it doesn't really matter one way or another. I do make my stitch length pretty small, and I know what a lot of you will say. is tiny, tiny stitch length means that if I have to rip something out, it's going to be really, really fiddly to get out because the stitches are so tiny. Well, yes, everything in life is a trade-off, I believe, so... With the tight stitch length, I get a nice, good, firm seam. I don't really have too much wiggle. Um, everything stays together pretty well. If I press my seams open, I don't really have much of a problem at the long arm. But if I do have to take pieces apart, it does cause a little bit of a problem. So stitch length, all entirely up to you. I like to use a tinier stitch length when I'm piecing, just so that my pieces stay together very well. Um, might be a little bit of extra too much, maybe. Um, but again, I'm open to comments. So if you have a different way or a, an, another way of doing something, please post that in the comments. I would love to share it with everyone. Um, kind of like I shared last week about our friend Jennifer who said, hey, all you have to do is press your even rows to the right and your odd rows to the left. And then when you put all your rows together, all your seams will nest. So thank you again, Jennifer, for that tip because man, that was a really good one. I really like that one a lot. So let's sew this together and then I'll show you what it looks like on the beginning and the end when I use my leaders. Um, I do want to remind you too that I do sew very, very slowly, especially in a situation like this. And I think that lots of um, ladies would say, or quilters, not just ladies, because we have some gentlemen quilters too. Um, a lot, lots of quilters would say that they would pin this so that it would be perfectly still where it is and no shifting and so on. Um, that's very, very helpful too. I think that pinning when you're a newer quilter is a very wise idea. Um, I will tell you that it helps a lot, but when you get to the points, to the very, very end, and because I'm sewing a triangle, I have a bottom that's kind of like on an angle, on a 45 degree angle. I wanna make sure that um, I go very, very slow at the end pardon me, I have my little, um, my little fabric scrap so that I can put it right under the needle. And I just very slowly sew down that end because those points will wiggle right under your needle. They will, um, they will get eaten up into your, into your throat plate. If you have a single stitch, if you have a straight stitch throat plate, which is the one that has just a tiny little hole in it, I highly recommend that when you're doing triangles like this, because if you have, um, I don't remember exactly what they call it for the other throat plate that has like a slit in it. So you can do zigzag and decorative stitches. Those points will get pushed into that slit. 
So if you've got a straight stitch plate, I recommend that you put, you put it in there now <laughs> if you're going to make this quilt or any half square triangles for that matter. So you can see that these little guys stay, you know, sewn onto the end and I just clip them and you can see that end. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it is not unraveled, so it's twisted together. Look at this guy. It's kind of unraveling at the end, but not exactly. Um, and those threads will stay together. So you can see that as I, I, I told you, I just sew really, really, really slow, right? So this side is really good. That side is really good. Look at that nice scant quarter inch seam. Um, if you're a newer quilter, you've probably heard or watched videos somewhere where people talk about a scant quarter inch seam. And I will tell you what that means to me. A scant quarter inch is a quarter inch seam minus one thread, maybe two. So if you think about the threads in your fabric and, or you think about um, the thread that you're using to sew, the, the width of that, that it's just a quarter inch minus that much. So it's teeny, teeny, tiny. If you measure it, it'll be a quarter inch exactly. And the reason why I do this is because when you press and you fold this little piece over, that thread does actually take up some space. And so a scant quarter inch seam gives you a little bit of allowance for the thread that's gonna take up a little space in there. So I'm gonna gently finger press this. And when I say gently, I mean hardly any pressure because these triangles, they just want to come out of shape. They're dying to get out of shape. And any little thing that you do will unshape them. So we're not going to do much to unshape them. And this is a time when you literally must press and do not wiggle and do not shift. Don't do anything extra because it will unshape them. And, and look at how pretty this triangle is right now, right? So we've got those two together. So I decided that the glasses are a good idea because guess what? I did sew them together the wrong. So I had to take them apart and put them together correctly. And so now I'm going to gently finger press because now they're in the right order. And we're going to sew 
the two units together. So I think I've talked about this before, but whenever you see in a pattern that it refers to a unit, it could be referring to a block, but generally it'll say block. When it says unit, it's usually referring to a part of a block or a part of a section, right? So it will um, say, you know, you'll have six of these units and then you're going to put these two units together to make this block. So this is a unit, right? Because it's part of a block. Um, again, I am finger pressing very, very gently. I'm not doing anything, um, you know, too heavy handedly because I don't want to distort the block, right? And because it's on this side, it is going to be super stretchy. So we want to make sure first off that our points line up and that our, um, well, that our corners meet, right? So that our, our, our seams line up. So I have finger pressed them open, but what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and press everything into the dark because it seems to me that um, if I press them, then I can nest the seams and that's usually easier for me. So if I can do that, the pattern says press the seams as you like. So I am going to press the seams so that they nest. So I'm going to press and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've pressed my seams and now I can nest the seams on these blocks and make sure that because they're nested like that, that my corners will all match up. So what I'm going to do, because this is a pretty big block, and so I think I want to pin this to make sure that it stays exactly where I want it to stay. So I'm going to nest these two seams. Well, first I'm going to put my eyes on and I'm going to nest these two and pin. And I have some little tiny applique pins that I keep in my sewing drawer. So I am going to use these, um, but you can really use just about any pin that you, that you like. I keep different lengths of pins because I find that they're good for different things, right? And I know that I have cut these a little bit big. So whatever the pattern calls for, when I'm making half square triangles and quarter square triangles and those kind of things, I notice that a lot of designers um, have you cut something in seven eighths, let's say. Well, if it's calling for me to cut a, you know, five and seven eighths inch block, I am gonna cut a six inch block. It's only an eighth of an inch bigger, but that eighth of an inch makes a huge difference when I'm trimming half square triangles and I want them to be on size. So I highly recommend if you can, if you have extra fabric or enough fabric, and generally speaking, if you buy a kit, most of the time when we put kits together for you guys, we try to make it to have just a little extra you know, you want people to have a little extra just in case they miscut or make a mistake. Um, and so I do try to add a little extra in there for, for mistookens, as I call them. Um, and so I will, if the pattern is having me make half square triangles, I am going to cut everything then an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch bigger if I can. Because you can always trim down to size, but... You can't stick it back on if you cut it too small, right? So I'm just pinning this here so that I can carefully sew, that, sew it together. And so I'm gonna sew through this and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all sewn together. Okay, so we're just about done. I just want you guys to hear how slow, and I know it's a little silly, but how slow I'm sewing down to that corner. I mean, you know, experience is a great teacher. And when you've sewn enough of these together and kind of gotten cockeyed at the end and then it throws everything off, you kind of learn that it's just better to go slow. <laughs> just go slow have a little patience, put something funny or fun on TV or put a podcast on that you love and just take your time. Take your time and sew it. 
and put it together perfectly. You will not regret it. Look at that. See that? It's worth it. It's worth it in the end. And then I'm gonna press that to the dark and the very first block of the Live Boldly quilt lives boldly in my hands right now. I'm so excited to put this together, you guys. Super, super excited. So now I have to trim this to size and I have to make a lot more of them, a lot more. So I'm gonna do a few more of these. I am gonna um, put uh, make a, a couple more uh, pre, I'm gonna pre-cut a couple more blocks so that I can get them ready to sew together. And then we'll talk about uh, the ones that are like three, uh, three quarter square triangles. I mean, there's like, so there's two triangles on one side and then one full color on the other. And then we have a bunch of half square triangles. So we're gonna put these together. We're gonna trim them up and then we're gonna build that beautiful quilt. So I'm gonna take you over to the uh, cutting table and I'm gonna show you the ruler that I use to trim these, but I'm also gonna tell you how you can trim this with a regular ruler, okay? So we'll get right to that. Okay, so right now we're just gonna talk about this particular type of block. It's got four segments. I also did a little bubble here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flatten that out because see how this distorts how the block lays? It gives me like a little bump right there. Um, so I'm going to flatten that out with the iron, but this block has to be trimmed to 12 and a half inches. And I happen to have a 12 and a half inch ruler. I also have a ruler that's quite a bit bigger than this one. I have, a, um, this one is 16 and a half inches. Okay. So it's kind of a cheat to do it with the same size that you need because rulers often will have a very center mark right here. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me move it into the camera frame. So there's like a little circle, kind of a crosshairs right in the middle. And because this block has four parts, if I lay that crosshairs right in the center of the block and line up my 45 degree angle line, with the angle in the block, I know that if I trim all the way around, I've got 12 and a half inches. It's the perfect size, right? But what if I don't have this size? What if I've got something bigger? Um, Cause you can't do it with a smaller ruler. You could do it on the mat. So I could slide it over here and I could measure exactly 12 and a half and slice off. It seems like it's really just like the perfect size. So I just really need to clip off these dog ears here. But let's assume it was really big and I needed it to be smaller. I could use this ruler and I could line it up on the 12 and a half inch mark, right? Now the crosshairs is here, it's not gonna match, but I still have the measurements here. And what I do is line this up and I know it's at 12 and a half on this side here, nice and lined up. And then I've got it right on the 12 and a half at the bottom. And most rulers also have these things, guys. So see these lines right here that are like a little L? They're perfectly right angle. So if I line that up on the 12 and a half inch little right angle here, like so, make sure my lines all line up. I know that it's square on this side. I just trim this off and then I rotate and I line it up again and then trim off this dog ear and so on and keep turning the block and I'll have the perfectly square block with that regular ruler. Now, I am gonna use the ruler that I, you know, that's the size of the block. So I'm just gonna line her right up there. Make sure I line up those lines. And I will take my rotary cutter. This is my Martelli rotary color cutter. It's um, ergonomically shaped for your hand. The blade hides with this little tab right here. So you just kind of turn it and you can roll it on the table to expose the blade so you don't have to touch anything. So I'm just gonna measure, twi measure twice. Close my blade for a second and just slide this over so that it is lined up there. 
So I'm pretty sure I'm all lined up and I'm gonna open up my blade and just cut and cut. Close that sucker up again so I don't cut myself. <laughs> Take these guys off. That'll kind of stuck on that dog ear there. And then I'm gonna rotate my block 180 degrees and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just gonna line her up. And now I know this bottom and bottom and my left on this side are square. So I'm gonna line it right up there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna open up my blade and cut and cut. cut. Pretty sure I got that one. And then close her up. Get these little crumbs out of the way. And I have my very first block for our Living Boldly quilt is all trimmed up. How pretty is that? Isn't that just so nice? I cannot wait to do more of these and to show you how we do half square triangles and three quarter square triangles and all that happy stuff. So stay tuned next week for another episode of One Quilt from Start to Finish. Thank you guys for your support. Thanks for joining in. See you next week.